that there's a future and that the God throws wide open the gates of heaven to anybody that accepts Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. So this story is an awesome story. It's not pretty, but it is awesome. And not like the awesome you use when you're talking about, you know, your favorite pizza you ate or, or a video game that is just filled with awesomeness, you know. No, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the biblical kind of awesome. The awesome, when you open up the Bible and it said, let there be light. Now, that is awesome. When you go to a passage of the Bible that says, God is awesome, that's the awesome I'm talking about. Not your regular, everyday, ordinary awesome. No, I'm talking about big time, big league awesome. And that's the awesome I want to share with you to do, this biblical awesome. Because when you actually understand how awesome this story is, then there's a power in this story that can help convert people to finding peace, help transform people into becoming the people God wants them to be. And yes, it does open up a future, a bright future that is endless in eternity. So this is a story worth exploring. Amen? So I'll tell you what we're going to do. Let's get our minds and our hearts ready because I know the music has gotten you there, but let's get the rest of us going. And I want you to help us with our, saying our Bible commitment statement together. Would you do that with me, please? And, uh, and let's, let's share it together. This is God's word given to. You thought I was going to do this whole sermon without notes, weren't you? That was a little word, too, I was going to have to do without notes. Oh, I'm going to be all right. Yeah, I'm going to tell you the story, Luke's version of the story that happened Easter morning. I guess a lot of you know that a couple of women went to visit the tomb. Some women went to see, visit the tomb. They got up really early. Got it before the sun came up and they worked their way over to the tomb. And so I, I'm sure it's kind of dark when they arrived. Still a little bit. The sun is just barely kind of cracking the horizon. And when they get there, the giant stone that had covered the tomb of Jesus had been rolled away. Now, I don't know about you, but if I'm expecting to go to where somebody's buried and, and the gravestone isn't there, if something's out of place, it's dark, it's kind of creepy, I, I'm going to start moving a little more carefully as I go forward. It, But they step forward and the women start to go inside of the tomb. Now listen, it's still early. That means there's lots of shadows and dark places and they poke themselves in there and I don't doubt their hearts are beginning to pound, but they don't see nobody. In fact, they literally do not see nobody. It's not there. Not there. And they're probably looking at each other and before they have a chance to say anything, all of a sudden, two angels show up and they're lit up and they're bright like lightning. You ever been in a room when somebody flashes uh, their camera and pee, right? That's what it must have been like, the intensity of their showing up, these two angels, and they, and they, ask, they ask the women, who, are, who their eyes must be like saucers at this point, but their pupils dilated because it's kind of bright. Anyway, it was so bright that they ask them, why are you here? You know that the body's not going to be here. You knew that. And it says so in Mark 8.31. It says, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. You should have known that. And the ladies, I must have come back to them. It must have, oh yes, he did say that. Because they ran off and they wanted to tell the story to the disciples, to the rest of everybody else. And when they got there, I'm sure, with the incredible excitement, they must have been breathing from running so fast. And they, and they got their story out and the disciples are going, what? Wait a minute, ladies. Hold your horses. Dead people don't get undead. It just doesn't work that way. And they kind of were blowing her off. But I bet they shared the part about the angels, don't you think? Hey, but yeah, yeah, I got Right. It's part about the angels. You see, the two angels reminded them that this is exactly what Jesus said was going to happen, and it's happened. And Peter hears what's going on, and, and it's kind of mulling around in his mind. Well, what's going on there? Uh, yeah, he did tell us this stuff, and, and he decides to go take a look for himself. And the Bible says, Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb, and bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, no body. And he went away wondering to himself. And I think he also started to wonder what this all meant. You see, 
Peter would have surely thought about the fact that he had denied Jesus three times, right? And Jesus predicted that. And I'm sure he thought about all the different times Jesus had predicted his death and his resurrection. And after three days, his temple, you might destroy the temple, but I'm coming back. And that stuff had got to have been sinking in with Peter at that moment. And he realized, despite of how he felt, and believe me, he had felt at that moment pretty dark. Up till this moment, he had felt very confused because the predictions had been coming true. He had looked at himself and what he had done. He had witnessed the crucifixion of Jesus, but here he is. He's got hard evidence. He's got the linen in his hand. He's standing in an empty tomb, and there is no body. I imagine up to that point, though, he must have felt this sense of hopelessness. Maybe you feel that sense of hopelessness sometimes. Maybe you feel it now. Maybe your marriage is feeling hopeless. Or maybe your, your future for tomorrow is looking pretty dim. And maybe you're worried about the next paycheck or you're overwhelmed by a sense of anger or you, that's out of control. And, and maybe you're feeling hopeless about the fears you have and the anxiety that seems to be crushing you. Maybe you feel exactly the way Peter did. Hopeless almost dead inside. You know, when I was watching that Easter special last night, after my wife had gone to bed and forced me to continue watching the, the Easter special, <laughs> it only took them three scenes before the sparkly lights came out. It was broad daylight and they had them on, right? Come on, guys. Three scenes. I was beginning to think last night, what if this story about Easter bunnies and sweet chocolates and kids playing games and decorating eggs, what if their version of the story was true? What if, what if Easter was the Hallmark version and you didn't have hope? Listen, if their version was true, was, if... I mean, our situation would be totally dismal. We would feel so let down, left out, hurting. We'd be left in our hopelessness is what would happen. We would be in utter despair if it wasn't true. But listen, Peter's got the evidence. He's got his hands on the evidence, his concrete evidence. The body's not there. He has risen. He has risen from the dead. And that opens a plethora of opportunities for us because once we realize and acknowledge that Christ has risen from the dead, that means everything that God has told us, everything that Jesus has told us is absolutely true. Amen. Amen. And if it's true, and if all of that is true, and if all of that is true, what Jesus tells us, that means we have hope. We have hope for today. We have hope for tomorrow. We have hope for eternity. Amen. Amen. God bless it is a good day. Amen. He had a sweet victory, and we get to celebrate it. That's pretty awesome. Now I want to tell you a true story about a teacher that, had, that wanted to, to find a way to help some of the kids that were struggling who were in the hospital because of injury or illness, and she just wanted to go and, and get them caught up with their lessons, you know, so they wouldn't fall too far behind in school. And on her first day, she got her first assignment, and and uh, she was standing outside a little boy's room that she had been called to tutor, and uh, she realized she was in the burn unit. I don't know if you know this, but burn patients don't get painkillers like you would think. They got to learn to deal with pain. Burn patients understand what crucifixion would feel like. That's how bad it is. They really do. And here's this little boy in his room, and the, and the teacher uh, kind of walks in, and she's a little overwhelmed with the sight of this little guy and, and, the, uh, and, the, and the pain that's going on around her. And it's just, you can cut it with a knife, it's so much. And she's feeling really overwhelmed by it, but she kind of hangs in there, and she tells the little boy, well, your teacher told me that you need to work on your nouns and adverbs today. I'm going to help you with that. And she gives him a lesson. And she comes back the next day, and before she gets to the room, a, a nurse was there and interrupts and says, what did you tell that boy? And, and the teacher is feeling a little defensive, and, and uh, says, well, I, I was just helping him with the lesson. And before she could finish, she said, no, no, you don't understand. That boy didn't want to live anymore. What did you tell him? Because now he wants, he, he's filled 
with a sense of hope. And the nurse went back and asked the little boy, what did she tell you? And the little guy said with, with a tear running down his face, the little guy said, I couldn't believe a teacher was there trying to teach me nouns and adverbs because they would never send a teacher to teach a dead boy, would they? If you're feeling dead inside, if you're broken, if you're hurting, if you're alone, if you're lost, there's a message from another teacher that I want to share you. And his name is Jesus Christ. And his message is hope-filled. His message is about tomorrow and the next day and a future in eternity. And his message will take the darkest days and turn them into light. His message is filled with the promise that anyone, no matter what you're going through, what it is that you're experiencing, anybody that's struggling with life right now or struggling with what's coming tomorrow, that's the message that the teacher wants to give you, that there is hope for tomorrow. Amen. And listen, Easter isn't pretty, but it is awesome. It's awesome because God has sacrificed his only son that we would have the freedom from pain, that we'd have an opportunity for peace, that we would experience the loving gifts that God has for us, his mercy, his grace, and most importantly, his son Jesus. We can have it, we can have it all because he is risen and you would say, he is risen indeed. Amen to that. It's a good day. It's a great day. It's Easter. It's Easter, and you are Easter people. You believe, and there's nothing more precious than that. There's nothing more powerful than that. And Psalm 30, 11 through 12 says this, because of Easter, you turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy that my heart may sing to you and not be silent. And therefore, we can passionately proclaim from the bottom of our hearts, from the depths of our soul, that he indeed is risen. And you would say, he is risen indeed. God bless you all and amen and amen. <laughs> Happy Easter to everybody here today. God bless you. And, and I want to share one more thing with you. I want to share you an opportunity to take some of this blessing home with you, not only in your heart and your head, but literally through the hands of Christ that has prepared a meal for us, this holy special meal. And this meal was given to us so that we would never forget the story of Easter. Because when we're feeling lost, dark, alone, this meal can restore you. It's powerful. It's packed with all the nutrients you need to be restored. It's packed with mercy. It is packed with grace. It is packed with the love of Christ come and experience this meal and he gave it to us in a way that we would never forget the story because on the night before he was crucified he held up an ordinary loaf of bread and he broke it in half and he gave thanks to God and he told his disciples those who were present not understanding but present they heard it and later remembered what he said said this is my body broken for you and when the meal was concluded he took an ordinary cup of wine and he held it up in the presence of these same disciples he gave thanks to God. He said, this is my blood poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. I don't want anybody to walk out of here today not healed. I don't want anyone to walk out of here without a sense of Christ in their hearts today. I don't want anyone to feel alone. I don't want anyone, and nor does God, want anyone here to be hurting. So I want you to come and give whatever it is that you're holding on to and hurting with and leave it here at the foot of this cross on the cross that Jesus died for, for you and me. His promise is he'll walk with you. His promise is he will heal you if you seek him. Ask and you shall receive this holy blessing today. Now come and pray with you. Come up and receive the meal and just sit here and let the experience of this day warm your hearts change your lives, transform you into Easter people. In the name of Jesus, we celebrate the body of Christ.
broken for you? The body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. Give him the body of Christ. Yes, we're 
grateful.